NASA confirmation, Planet X is real. Scientists fear it can destroy life on Earth. An extinction level event. Recently, Caltech researchers Cosentin Batigan and Mike Brown discovered evidence of the planet back in January 2016. They believe it's similar in size to Uranus and orbits the Sun around 20 times faster than Neptune and it's also been suggested that such a planet could potentially fling comet storms towards Earth. Scientists fear that a planet they believe orbits the outer fringes of our solar system could kill all life on Earth. Daniel Whitmire, who is a researcher at the University of Arkansas, said the persistent evidence of Jovian mass companion in the Oort cloud where comets originate may explain mass extinctions on Earth. The dislodged comets not only smash into Earth, they also disintegrate in the inner solar system as they get nearer the Sun, reducing the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth. The only major difference between Whitmire's theory and the theory proposed by Caltech researchers is the length of Planet X's orbit. Whitmire suggests the orbit of 27 million years, whereas Batigan and Brown believe the planet orbits every 10 to 20,000 years. That's a discrepancy that doesn't necessarily rule out the influence of Planet X and what it could have on comets and its potential threat to Earth and all life on Earth. The idea of a distant massive planet bringing doom to humanity was originally proposed by numerous ancient civilizations such as the Sumerians who said that Nibiru Planet X dwarfs Earth and bombards the solar system with comets every several thousand years. Recently in 1984 astrophysicists suggest a red dwarf orbits the Sun every few million years and periodically causes immense comet showers plunging Earth into cold and darkness and that of course kills uh, almost all life anything from 70 percent of all life upwards the scientists believe the sun's companion is small a dark star known as a red dwarf with a mass probably of one tenth of the sun is still huge compared to earth it's one tenth of the suns and an elliptical orbit carrying out into the Oort cloud. So it gets carried out to the Oort cloud. Within that cloud, more than a hundred billion comets are flying around in remote orbits. As Planet X Nibiru passes through, the dwarf star gravity disrupts the orbits of about a billion comets. So these billion comets shower down towards the inner solar system and bombard anything they find there. Now, we used to call this Nibiru Planet X, Wormwood, whatever. The scientists have a new name for it, they call it Planet Nine. The only reason that they're calling it Planet Nine is so that they don't call it Planet X and refer to it as being Nibiru, uh, the destroying uh, planet that uh, returns every tens of thousands of years, every few thousand years to wreak havoc to Earth. But in fact, it is Planet X. It's just that they're calling it Planet Nine. Meantime, various scientists claim that around August of 2016 is when Planet X Nibiru will pass Earth. In the meantime, NASA has recently released a statement on Planet X in April of 2016, uh, saying that it doesn't exist. And uh, in, uh, in the past, NASA has admitted that Planet X existed. Yet now they seem to be going back on their word. I leave links below for you for this. The truth is out.
we don't have to call it Planet X. NASA wants you to call it Planet 9. And they probably want you to start arguing about where it is and how close it's going to come. But the bottom line is, is we've been measuring this interplanetary helium, hydrogen, and electrons since 1999. Everything has been corroborated by other studies, microwave studies from Earth, other satellites, even SOHO, which so many of these um, YouTube astronomers show you a lot of SOHO stuff. Guess what? They haven't showed you. 1,500 videos later, they never showed you. SOHO was also measuring a second solar wind. They never told you, did they? That, that, that data was available to them. These are smart people. Why do I have to show you the helium all the time? Because they're here to lie to you. Your family's life is in danger. And it's not really so much the solar system I'm worried about. I keep saying, fear mankind before you fear the solar system. That's your most immediate threat. has to have astronomers just scratching their head. Oh, why would you need to update an in inframeris? Even the go-to telescopes are needing to be updated. People are having fits trying to find things by using the computer tracking. That literally has to have astronomers just scratching their head. Oh, why would you need to update an in inframeris? We tried to show you that a lot of movement in the northern hemisphere fault lines. We think that was due to a wobble. We think it's because this planet X, so to speak, is traveling underneath the ecliptic and diving on a final approach. Yes, I did say that. Now just look at the earthquakes in the northern hemisphere. Uh, there's been a steady increase. And we have video. It's unbelievable video of the North Pole wobbling on a satellite, on a time-lapse image. You're going to love it. Um, but the argument should be over. This thing is creating our drought. Now, we're not talking athlete's foot here, are we? No, we're not. This is a serious, serious game we're playing here with information and here you see I mean look at all this data the, what is all this data what is this picture about it's about the second solar wind that they never told you about and what's really unfortunate is that all of these satellites even ACE has a database for the interplanetary helium and it's unfortunate that people who have thrown ACE statistics, ACE data, um, SOHO data, on cosmic rays, they've thrown it in your face. And all the time in the exact same database were measurements on a second solar wind that they said absolutely could not exist. So they were either wrong or they were lying. And how somebody can take such a firm position and say, no, something doesn't exist. People, this is so pathetic. It's, it's, it's really a, a comedy routine. These people proclaim to be experts that look and sound like experts, um, similar to some of the people on the Weather Channel. Uh, 
And they had these production teams behind them, and you got badgered for even mentioning Planet X. And the whole time, these people making money off their productions, mind you, uh, were using ACE satellite swoops, DXL. They were Rosetta, Rosada, RSOAT. There are so many satellites they were using, and every single one of those satellites that they used for their production also had a file of data on this interplanetary helium, hydrogen, and electrons, which describes a solar wind from a brown dwarf. How, I mean, doesn't that sound pathetic? That these people were so adamant and so blatant and so abrasive and so hurtful that some people who did not deserve their wrath and their trolling wrath of their trolls were using data off the same satellite that was measuring the second solar wind they said absolutely didn't exist. Now, if those if that doesn't prove right here, right now, this second, those people are blatantly deceiving you, then you have no hope left. But meanwhile, your family's in danger. I mean, have you not read and looked at what's going on in the world? It's time to get ready. seek